now girls get going for God. Hello ladies, Barbara Chapman, Hondo, Texas, and today's audio is wrapping up the summary of the books of the Bible. This one's going to be on the New Testament, a brief summary of each book of the Bible so you know what to expect in there. And these are called history books, his story. You've probably heard that before. The word history is his story. I thought that was neat the first time I got it. Uh, the word gospel means good news, and we're sharing the good news on this discipleship program on the Cowgirls Get Going for God Good News Handbook. And each of the four books of the gospel has a different focus, okay? And then about one-third of their pages are devoted to the events of the last times of Jesus. So we have Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and Acts. All right, so Matthew, it says Matthew was written to a Jewish audience, and the gospel links the Old Testament and the New Testament. It presents Jesus as the Messiah and King promised in the Old Testament. And Matthew emphasizes on Jesus' authority and his power. His authority and power. And then Mark, Mark probably had practical Roman readers in mind when he was uh, writing. His gospel stressed action and gives a straightforward blow, blow, blow by blow account of Jesus' work on the earth. And then Luke, Luke was a doctor. So his gospel provides many details of human interest, especially in Jesus' treatment to the poor and needy. A joyful tone characterizes Luke's book, though. And then we have John. John has a different, more reflective style than the other gospels. And then we have Acts, and Acts tells what happened to Jesus' followers after he left them. Peter and Paul soon emerged as leaders of rapidly spreading church. Okay, then we have... The next portion is the letters. These are the letters, and there's 13 of them. Paul wrote 13 letters, and Romans is the first one. It was written for a sophisticated audience, and the Romans describes theology in a logical, organized form. And then 1 Corinthians is a very practical book. It talks about problems in the church. 2 Corinthians, Paul wrote a follow-up letter to defend himself against accusations by false teachers. And then Galatians is a short version message of Romans. It shows how Christ came to bring freedom, not bondage, to set of laws. And then Ephesians, although written in jail by Paul, is a letter of one of Paul's most optimistic and encouraging. And it tells the advantage of a believer in Christ. You know, that's really hard to, to fathom or grasp, I think, for Ephesians to be so encouraging and written by a man that was in jail. That is just uh, encouragement for you and I. Philippians is a church that Philippi ranked among Paul's favorites. And this friendly letter tells us that joy can be found in any situation. Joy can be found in any situation. Then in Colossians, that was written to oppose certain cults, because there's cults out there. So Colossians tells how faith in Christ is complete. And nothing needs to be added to what Christ did. It's just Jesus. And then we have 1 Thessalonians. And this was composed early in Paul's ministry, and the letter gives a capsule history of one church as well as Paul's direct advice about specific problems, okay? And then we have uh, 2 Thessalonians, and 2 Thessalonians is a stronger tone than his first letter, and the sequel goes over the same topics, especially the church's question about uh, Christ's second coming. And then in 1 Timothy, as Paul uh, neared the end of his life, he chose young men such as Timothy to carry on his work. And his two letters to Timothy from a leadership manual for a young pastor. So this is really good for those in leadership. And then 2 Timothy was written just before Paul's death, and it offers Paul's final words to his young assistant. And then Titus, uh, Titus ministered to Crete, a difficult place to nurture a church, and Paul's letter gave practical advice on how to go about it. So these are good for leaders. And then Philemon, Paul urged Philemon, owner of a runaway slave, Onesimus, to forgive his slave and accept him as a brother in Christ. That's going to teach us about forgiveness. And then we have some other letters. We have Hebrews, and no one knows who wrote Hebrews, and it's probably the first uh, went to Christians in danger of slipping back in Judaism. And then James, James was a man of action. He was a man of action and he emphasized the right kind of behavior for a believer. So James is very good. That's one of my favorite books. Is that someone who calls himself or herself a Christian ought to act like it. And James believed, and his letters spell out the specifics. So this is some real 
simple, good guidelines for us as new Christians of what we, what's to be expected and what we should do. And then in 1 Peter, early Christians often met violent opposition, and Peter's letter comforted and encouraged Christians who were often persecuted in their faith. And then 2 Peter is a contrast to Peter's first letter, and this one focused on problems that sprang up from inside the church, and it warns against false teachers. And we're going to stop there and we'll have to come back and finish the rest of the summary of the New Testament. So y'all come back ladies. God bless you. Bye bye. Barbara Chapman, Hondo, Texas. Women of Word Ministry, www.wow-womenofword.com and on the YouTube, on the Google bar, you just put in there 007 BADS or WARR252 and you can see the videos out there. And the videos are being put on the home page of the website also. Blessings. Bye-bye.